hey guys what's up everyone welcome or welcome back again to another video tutorial from the ep 3x institute of mathematics my name is akeen your math instructor and of course in today's video we are going to be looking at the trigonometrical ratios we're going to be paying a little bit more attention to some more logical and more so to speak advanced questions application problems as it relates to the ratio now in a previous tutorial i had looked at the introduction to the trig ratios we had explained what the ratios are how the formulas were formulated and we had looked at some steps whilst using those steps to apply to some introductory questions how to use the formula so you can definitely go ahead and have a look at that video a link will be provided in the description and pinned in the comment section down below click that link and you should definitely tune into that particular video before you actually get into this one right so in today's video as I mentioned before, we are in fact going to be looking at some more application questions. Whilst doing that, we're going to be doing a simple little review. All right. Now, if you are in fact a new viewer, new student, and you've seen this channel for the first time, my aim is to give every CSEC, CC, SLC, SEA, EDXL students, and just math students in general, an opportunity to, to just become better at math and to become more efficient when it comes to exam preparation right so that's the purpose of the video that's the purpose of the channel now if you are joining the channel for the first time of course for weekly uploads weekly tutorials smash the subscribe button and turn on the post notification bell leave me a like if you have gotten if you have gotten any sort of value from the channel and of course leave your comments suggestions or video request and uh, questions down in the comment section below all right so let's jump right into the video and we're going to be taking a look at what the trig ratios are now as mentioned before the pr prior video had already explained a lot of what you're now seeing on the screen what the ratios are and how to apply them so we should not have much of a problem there assuming that you had watched that previous tutorial so with that said, let's just do a quick read through here. The sine ratio is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. The cos ratio here is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And the tangent ratio is equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent side. Now, in order for us to know which one of the ratios to use in whichever situation presented to you, the following three steps should be obeyed. All right now the very first thing that you would want to do is ensure that you know what side of the triangle is what side bear in mind that the orientation of the diagram will change from question to question and we already know that the reference angle in the right angle triangle is what causes an interchange between the opposite and the adjacent so we must always be aware at all times Following identifying the sides, we need to identify what is it that's required for us to find and what is it that's provided to us to help us find what we want. And step three is more of an observation. It's a selection process. Once you have added, once you have completed step one and step two, step three will jump out at you where you're just going to be selecting the ratio that involves step one and or sorry, you're going to select in the ratio that is instructed by step two or that involves step two. All right. So we're going to be looking at a very simple diagram here. And this very simple diagram here is just basically like a review of the last example. So nothing too tough just to start off. And as we progress, we're going to be going through the more difficult problems. So as you can see here, guys, we have a right triangle. Right, and this right triangle here consists of a side measuring 17 centimeter, and we have a reference angle here of 34 degrees. And we are in fact looking for the side that is marked X. Now, according to the steps that we have been discussing here, we are in fact going to be naming the sides of the diagram. So here we have this here being our hypotenuse. 
all right because it is the side that is facing the right angle all right we are going to be naming this side up here the opposite because it is the side that is opposite to the reference angle and of course this side here is going to be your adjacent side so we have completed step one by naming the various sides of the diagram following naming the various sides we are now going to be observing what is it that is what is it that we are trying to find and clearly we are trying to find the side marked x here indicated by the green arrow and that side is literally the hypotenuse side right or the length of the hypotenuse and the side that we have been given as support to help us find what we want is the adjacent side which is 17. now in support of the adjacent side we have a reference angle that's going to come into play so we're looking for the ratio that involves the adjacent side which is what was given and the hypotenuse side which was what which is what we're looking for now according to the mnemonic sokatoa you can clearly see that it is in fact the cost ratio that involves the hypotenuse side and the adjacent side simultaneously. So we would go right ahead here and we would see, all right, cosine theta is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse side. And we would go right ahead and we're gonna find the cost of the angle that is 34 degrees. And so the adjacent side, as you can see here, is 17. And the hypotenuse side here is marked by the variable x. So you would have your calculator in hand and you'd find the cost of 34. And you'd end up with a result of 0 0.829. And that's going to be equal to 17 divided by x. <clears throat> Now, in past tutorials, you would have been exposed to the shortcut that stated that if the unknown variable is in the denominator, we are going to swap position and divide. So we're going to say x then is equal to 17 divided by 0 0.829. Okay, so 17 divided by 0 0.829. And we're going to find that the length of that side here that we're looking for, which is marked by x, is equal to 20.51, all right, 20.51 centimeter. So that would be the length of the side marked X, all right? So that is an application question. We had already done examples like this in the previous tutorial. A link is in the description and pinned in the comment section below. Check that video out. You'll get a better understanding of how smooth this process is. In that video, we went through all the necessary details of how to be very effective in choosing the ratio. And of course, we went through when, when to use the ratio and, uh, of course, how. Right, what situation will present itself for us to use the ratio? Let's look at another example here. And in this particular example, now we have an angle here that is marked by 72 degrees. We have another side here that is marked by this by the variable x again, and we are provided with another side here of 15. So let's have a look at what is happening here. Now, as usual, we're going to go through the entire process. So we're going to go through the process here where we're going to be naming our size. Notice that the orientation of the diagram has changed. So once again, we know that this is our hypotenuse because the right angle is down in the corner here. I forgot to indicate it actually. All right, that's the hypotenuse. All right, now this is the angle, right? Just like the 34 that we had earlier, this is the angle, 72. So this becomes our opposite side. And of course, this side becomes our adjacent side all right now that we have identified what is it that we are uh what is it that um we have identified the sides we're now going to be looking at what is it that we're searching for and what has been provided to us now clearly you can see here that we have been provided with 15 centimeters which is being represented by the opposite side and we are in fact looking for the high hypotenuse which is marked by x so according to the mnemonic sokotoa you'd find that the opposite and the hypotenuse is connected to the sine ratio all right so sine theta 
is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse so the sine of 72 degrees is going to be equal to the opposite side which again is 15 and the hypotenuse side here is x so we proceed to go on our calculator here and we'll find that the sine ensure that your calculator is programmed in degrees so the sine of 72 degrees here is going to be equal to 0 0.0.951 0 and that's going to be equal to 15 divided by x so with that said just like the previous example when the unknown variable is in the denominator we're going to swap position and divide so therefore you're going to find that x is equal to 15 divided by 0 0.951 so 15 divided by 0 0.951 and we get 15.77 so x is equal to 15.8 rounded off all right so that is going to be the result of the side marked x all right so hopefully you guys catch on to that one hopefully you're realizing how simple using the ratios can be if you are and you haven't smashed the like button and you have gain some knowledge here ensure that that like button is already turned on so that other students can be helped by this tutorial right another example here we are going to be looking at finding the length of a side but now this side this time we have not marked the side with a variable we are just basically using the names of the vertex to find the side so we are looking for the side that is connected by the vertex b and c so we're looking for this side down here this particular side bc all right we're looking for the length of bc all right again it is a right angle triangle and we are in fact going to have to use one of the trig ratios because even though we're looking for a side the pythagorean theorem as explained easiest formula of all the four the pythagorean theorem cannot be applied because we do not have a supporting another supporting side so here we have a side and an angle we're gonna be applying the steps here this side is the hypotenuse as usual because it is facing the 90 degree angle all right it's opposite to the 90 degree angle this is the angle here 24 so this side down here becomes the opposite and the 9 centimeter which was provided to us is the adjacent side so therefore here we are looking for the side marked BC, which is represented by the opposite. And we have been provided with the side 9 centimeter, which is represented by the side, represented by the adjacent side. So according to the mnemonic, the ratio that involves or includes the opposite and the adjacent side simultaneously is in fact the tangent ratio. So tan theta is equal to opposite over high sorry pardon me opposite over high no that's actually opposite over uh, adjacent so here the tan of 24 degrees is going to be equal to the opposite side which is bc divided by the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent i'm not sure what's wrong why i keep seeing hypotenuse but the adjacent side here which is nine centimeter so now what we have here is the tan of 24 let's go on our calculator so the tan of 24 is equal to 0 0.445 so 0 0.445 get to get some space here so that's 0 0.445 and that's equal to x that's equal to bc over 9 All right bc over 9 so here now the unknown variable which is bc here is in the numerator so we're going to cross multiply all right so we're going to say bc is equal to 0 0.445 multiplied by 9 and we're going to get an approximate answer here that bc is equal to 4 centimeter right 4 centimeter with an angle like that all right so that is how you apply first three examples of this tutorial here showed you how to use the sine ratio the cost ratio and the tan ratio 
right now we're going to kick it up a notch here and we're going to be looking at some more advanced questions here in a moment All right, guys, so welcome back. And we are back to look at this particular diagram here. All right. Now, diagrams like these tend to give students a lot of problems. And the problem that a lot of students have is they are unable to visualize the rules that needs to be applied. Now, the very first thing that I encourage my students to do once they get a diagram looking like this, the very first thing that I recommend that the students do is to split the diagrams apart. All right. Once you split the diagrams apart, you're going to be able to use up a lot of your fundamental skills that we actually went through earlier. Because once the diagrams are split up, you're going to always see a diagram looking like this shape or like this shape or like the very first shape that we had right here. So you're always going to be dealing with a situation like this. And then so once you're able to successfully um, split up the, the, the main diagram into parts, then from there, you shouldn't have much of an issue. All right. Now, we have an angle here that is marked 38 degrees. Our firstly, our diagram is named A, B, C, D. We have an angle here at A, 38 degrees. We have an angle here at the angle A, D, B, 90 degrees naturally over here is going to be 90 degrees also and the angle down here is 54 we have only one supporting side which is 11. so with that said then we're going to be looking now at splitting up the diagrams so let's go across to a new page here so firstly let's have a look the first diagram we have is this one here cdb so C, so C, D, B. Okay, so we have that side C, D, B, and then we have D, A, B. Then we have D, A, B, D, A, B. All right, so that's D, B, very good. And we can insert our 90 degrees here. For this one, our 90 degrees is going to be here. And then we have another 90 degrees here. All right, so those are the two diagrams that we really have. All right, so that one is upwards like so. Okay, good. All right, let's insert some of the measurements that we do have for, for the triangle C, D, B. We have 54 and 11.4. That's 54 degrees and 11.4. So 54 degrees and 11.4. And for this diagram over here, we have the 90 degrees and we have 38 degrees at the top. Okay. I think this orientation needs to be fixed. Let me just redraw this diagram a little bit better. So we have it upwards, let's say down so. that's how it looks something like that so we'd have had the 90 degrees here and this would have been let's say here d a b all right so that's d a b all right i think we have it now we have an angle up here of 38 degrees all right so let's see how we can just work through this problem here all right so now we have a fundamental diagram looking at here and the very first thing that we are asked to find here is the length of db so we are going to be looking at the triangle that contains db and is, as you can see here both diagrams contain db basically both diagrams when split apart is shearing aside db here is db here and here is db down here so we are shearing aside basically all right so that means that 
I can use either diagram to find DB, but I have to use the diagram that provides me with the most supporting information. And clearly this side, this diagram down here only has an angle. I do not have a supporting side, so I cannot look at this diagram here. I have to go up here to look at this diagram. So DB can be attained, the length of DB can be attained from this diagram here. We have a supporting angle of 54 and we have a side of 11.4. That kind of that kind of suggests that we need to use a trig ratio. All right. So if we recommend that we use a trig ratio, let's identify the sides here. And this is going to be, let's say here, this is going to be the hypotenuse side. This is the supporting angle. So this is the opposite side and this is our adjacent. So we are looking for DB, which is what? Represented by the opposite side. And we are in fact looking for that we have, we've been in fact provided with a hypotenuse side, which is 11.4. So the ratio that involves the opposite and the hypotenuse is in fact sine. So sine and ratio sine theta is equal to opposite over hype okay because we are looking for the opposite and we have been provided with the hypotenuse so sine of 54 is equal to the opposite side which is db and the hypotenuse side is 11.4 so we hop onto our calculator and we have sine of 54 0 0.809 so that's 0 0.809 and that's going to be equal to db over 11.4 we've reiterated this more than once so you will realize that we're going to cross multiply here so that's 11.4 multiplied by 0 0.809 so we end up with db being equal to 9.22 okay 9.22 centimeters so here, the length of this side here is 9.22, all right? Now, once that side is 9.22, obviously this side down here is going to be 9.22 also. And I do recommend that once you've done your calculation, ladies and gentlemen, once you got your answer, transfer it back onto your diagram, all right? You will find out the purpose of that later on. Now, we have attained the length of db. We're going to proceed now to looking for the length of AB. Let's look at the diagram that contains AB. Here, we have a side here, AB. And so you notice here that due to the fact that I've just attained the length of DB, it now makes it, now makes it probable that I can use this diagram here to find AB. Had I asked you to find AB before, it would not have been possible because we would not have we would not have been provided with enough information. Now the side that we have found now give us the support that we need. So once again, we're going to be using a ratio. We cannot use the Pythagorean theorem because we're not been provided with two sides. We have only been provided with a side and an angle. So therefore we know we're going to be using a ratio. So let's go ahead and name our sides. The 38 degrees obviously makes the 9.22 our opposite. The 90 degrees makes AB the hypotenuse. And obviously this side is the adjacent so once again we are in fact looking for a b which is the hypotenuse and we are or we have been provided with 9.22 which is the opposite so once again this is going to be a trig ratio application we are going to be using sine so sine is what deals with opposite and hypotenuse so sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse and so sine of the angle 38 is equal to the opposite side in this case now is 9.22 and the hypotenuse here is the side we're looking for which is a b so hop onto our calculator to the sine of 38 degrees that's 0 0.615 so that's 0 0.615 and that's going to be equal to 9.22 divided by a b We've reiterated this when the unknown variable is in the denominator, we swap position and divide. So AB is equal to 9.22 divided by 0 0.615. 9.22 divided by 0 0.615. 14.99. 
So you could approximately say it's 15, but let's just work with AB being equal to 14.9, all right? But yeah, rounded off would be approximately 15 centimeter, all right? So both of those are acceptable. So hopefully you guys catch on to those two applications here. Let's go about now at looking at finding the length of AC. All right, so we are looking for all of this side here all of this side here, AC. And clearly you can see that a part of AC, a part, AC has been divided into two parts, right? B because of the perpendicular um, line here that makes, that was, because of the perpendicular line that meets the baseline at D here, then AC has been divided into two parts, not two halves, but two parts. So clearly you can see that to find AC, you would have to find the length of AD and you would have to find the length of DC and add them. So if we can do that, then we should be okay. So let's put it right here that AC is going to be equal to AD. It's going to be equal to AD plus DC. So we have to go about finding both of those sides. So let's go around to our diagram here. We're looking for AD. Let's look at the diagram that AD is on. Remember that we had just found AB, so we forgot to put that information onto the diagram. We had gotten it to be 15, rounded off, right? So that's 15. So that's 15 centimeter here, all right? We had rounded it off from that. All right, so AD would have been on this side here. All right, so clearly we could use the Pythagorean theorem or we could use a ratio, all right? In this case, we have an option. So we could use the Pythagorean theorem, which is what I'm tempted to use, but I think that for the purpose of the video and the mere fact that we are focusing mainly on using the trig ratios, we could actually go right ahead here and use a ratio. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But what I want you to do for me is use the Pythagorean theorem and, up and use this as the hypotenuse and this as one of the legs calculate and leave your answer and let me know in the comment section below if you've gotten the same answer that i have gotten when i use one of these ratios so i'm going to go right ahead here and i'm going to figure this out so here we have already named the sides so step one has been completed nothing has changed but this time now i am looking for the adjacent side now i have an option here because i'm looking for the adjacent side and I'm supported with the hypotenuse, I could use cos because cos would have been adjacent over hypotenuse. Or because I'm also looking for the adjacent side and I've been provided with the opposite here, I could use the tangent ratio because tangent deals with adjacent, opposite and adjacent. So I could, for this particular problem, I could use the tan and I could use the cos. All right, so let's go right ahead and we're going to do both, all right? We're gonna do both to make sure that we get the same answer. So here we have cosine theta is equal to adjacent over hype. And I also have the tan ratio here. Tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. All right, so we're gonna insert both numbers simultaneously. So the angle that we're working with is 38 degrees. All right, so that's the cost of 38. And the adjacent side here is what we're looking for, which in this case is AD. And the hypotenuse side here, we had worked out to be 15. We can confirm that looking at the diagram again. The hypotenuse side is 15 and the adjacent side is AD. That's what we're looking for. So let's just work this problem out here. Cost of 38. Cost of 38. 0 0.788, so 0 0.788, and that's going to be equal to AD over 15. The unknown variable is in the numerator, so we're going to multiply. So 0 0.788 rounded off times 15. That's going to give us 11.82, so AD is equal to 11.82. Now, because we have an option, we can go right ahead and try the tangent ratio. So that's tan of 38. So that's the tan of 38. And that's going to be equal to the opposite side is the 9.22. And 
and the adjacent side is what we're looking for, which is AD. So let's go ahead and turn 38, and we're going to get 0 0.781. And that's going to be equal to 9.22 divided by AD. So the unknown variable is in the denominator, so we swap position and divide. So that's AD is equal to 9.22 divided by 0 0.781. And we get approximately 11.8. So AD is equal to 11.8. So you can see that we got the same answer using two different formulas. So it really kind of depends on how you see the problem. What is it that you're using as support, right? And like I said, you can use the Pythagorean theorem and you should get the exact same result as I've got. Let me know in the comment section if that's what you got, all right? So that is how we find AD. Now, remember that we had initially said that in order for us to find AC, we needed AD and DC. So where would we find DC? DC would have been up here in this diagram here. And once again, we have options because we have the 9.22 and we have the hypotenuse. So we could, sorry, we have the, right? So we have the opposite side and we have the hypotenuse. We could use the trig, uh, the Pythagorean theorem to help us as well as we could use a ratio or one of the ratios. So here we're looking for the adjacent. We have been supported with the opposite side here and the what? Hypotenuse. So it's kind of like the same thing that we did earlier. We had the hypotenuse and we had the opposite. We have the opposite and we have the hypotenuse. So again, for this particular question, we could use the cos ratio or the tangent ratio to find DC, All right? So let's go right ahead and do that, All right? So here, I'm just going to be using one because I've just proven to you that you could use both to get the answer. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the cos ratio here. All right, so cos theta is equal to the opposite side, sorry, the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So the angle that we're working with in this case here is 54 and the adjacent side here is going to be the side that we're looking for, is it? Let's double check on that. The adjacent side here, in fact, yes, it's, it is the side we're looking for, which is going to be DC. All right, so it's DC. And because we've been provided with the hypotenuse here, the hypotenuse is in fact 11.4, uh, All right, So it is 11.4. So let's cos 54, that is 0 0.587, and that's equal to DC over 11.4. Unknown variable is in the numerator, so we simply cross multiply. So that's 11.4 multiplied by 0 0.587, and we get an answer that DC is equal to 6.69, 6.69 centi. Meter. So that's the length. All right. Go ahead and use the tangent ratio and let me know if you got the same answer as 6.69 in the comment section below. All right. So we're going to proceed here 6.69 and 11.8. So 6.69. Okay. So that's 6.69. And we had gotten 11.8 for this. Is that what we got? Yes, we had calculated it, 11.8, that's correct. So we're good to go. So let's go back onto our mean diagram here where we're gonna go back to the formula. We had AD being 11.8 and 6.69 or 6.7, that's fine too. So 11.8 plus 6.69 and we've gotten an answer of 18.49. Right, and that is the length of this side here, 18.49 centimeters, all right? So that is good. We have attained the results of all these three, not too bad. Hopefully this tutorial is helping you in some way, shape or form, all right? So let's just proceed now to the last question that I have for this particular tutorial here. All right, this is the last question for this particular tutorial. And let's see what we can do with this one. So 
a different diagram now, just looking a little different, and we're looking for the length of AB. All right, so once again, I recommend that we split the diagrams apart. So here I would have had a triangle here, and we're going to name this one here A, B, D. Our 90 degrees is here, we have an angle of 23. And we have another one, we have, well, we have this small triangle here inscribed in this big one here. This big one here has an angle of 47 and a side of 18.7 with the 90 degree. This one is called A, B, C. All right, so we have the triangle ADB inscribed inside the triangle ABC. So we are looking for the length of AB. So on which side would we find AB here? So obviously you can see that AB, let me just write this a little better. Okay, this is just A, right? This is also A. Uh -huh. This is D and this is B. This is B and this is C, gotcha, and this is 47 degrees. So the side AB is on here, right? That's the side that we're looking for. Once again, it's going to be a ratio. So we've been doing this for a while now, so you should catch on to this, all right? So here, let's look at labeling our sides. Hypotenuse in front of the 90 degree, 47 degrees. This is the opposite side, and this is the adjacent side. We are obviously looking for AB, which is the opposite, and we've been provided with the hypotenuse, which is 18.7. So obviously this is a sine ratio, O divided by H. All right, so sine of theta, I believe I'm gonna run out of space, guys. I need to go to the other page here. So sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of the angle the angle that we're working with here is 47 so that's 47 and that's equal to the opposite side the opposite side here is going to be a b which we're looking for and the hypotenuse side here is going to be the 18.7 So hop onto our calculator once more. So the sine of 47, 0 0.731, and that's equal to AB over 18.7. The unknown variable is in the top, so we cross multiply 0 0.731 multiplied by 18.7. So AB here is equal to 13.67 rounded off. All right, so 13.7, 13.67 rounded off. All right, so we go on our diagram here, and as usual, we insert our answer. So here we have 13.7 rounded off. Let's work it one less more place, and we can put it onto here if you want to. That's 13.7. As I mentioned to you before, it's, it's highly recommended that once you work in questions like these problem solving questions, once you find an answer, you need to just insert it onto your main diagram or onto your split diagrams, right? It gives the diagram a bit more life and makes it a bit easier to understand as you progress through the problems. Now we're looking for the side DC here. So we're looking for this side here. And so for DC, I find that a lot of students tend to get a little bit thrown off with the fact that, oh, I could use a trig ratio because I have a side and I have an angle. The thing is this triangle here that has DC is not right angled. So that triangle cannot be used as a trig ratio, right? It is a, it is a regular triangle, assuming it's going to be a scalene triangle. Then you cannot use a trig ratio. So we have to be a little bit smart in terms of how we're going to be approaching this question. Now, once again, you can see that DC is going to be a part of a full side DB, uh, BD here. So notice that DC is a portion, a larger portion of the full side BC. If I could find out 
or if I could calculate the value of BC, all right, if I could calculate the value of BC and I would subtract the side, let me just use some colors here for you, all right, so if I could calculate BC, which is this here, and I could calculate also BD, then I could subtract BD from BC and I would attain the result of DC. And I have to use this sort of method because DC is a side that is not a part or it's not a full side of a right angle triangle, it's a partial side of a right angle triangle. So we have to use this kind of technique here. So let's just write a form up top and we're going to have that. Okay, DC is going to be equal to BC, which is the full side, take away the partial side here, BD. So we're going to have to go ahead and find separate sides here. All right. Now remember that we had found the 13.7. I forgot to put it right here. Okay, that's 13.7 here. All right, because we shear a side. Okay, we shear a side. So 13.7. So here, as the purpose of the video is to use the trig ratio, once again, I could find BC here by using the Pythagorean theorem because we have two sides. We have the 18.7 and we have 13.7. We have those two sides here. So we could use the Pythagorean theorem to find BC. I want you guys to do that and leave the answer down in the comment section. Let me know if it's right. But I'm going to be using a ratio. All right. And because I'm looking for BC, which is the adjacent, I have an option to use opposite over adjacent, which is tan, or adjacent over height, which is cos. And this is sort of similar to the question that we had just worked before. So I don't think I need to do both to show you that it's going to work. You would have seen in the previous example that it does work when you have a situation like this where you have options. So depending on which ratio you choose to use, then you will use the appropriate dimensions. Here, I'm just going to be using the tangent ratio, all right, because I have the opposite right here in front of me and I'm looking for the adjacent. So I'm going to be using the tangent ratio. So for this part of the problem here, I'm going to be using tan theta is equal to opposite divided by adjacent. And so the tan, the angle is 47. So tan of 47 is equal to the opposite side which is in fact the side um, which is in fact 13.7 and obviously the adjacent side is the side I'm looking for which is BC all right so there's tan 47 1. 1.072 so that's 1.07 and that's equal to 13.7 divided by BC, right? The unknown variable is in the denominator, so we swap position and divide, so that's 13.7 divided by 1.07. So we get 12.8. So therefore, BC is equal to 12.8 centimeter. All right, so we go over here and we put our answer, 12.7, is it? It is 12.7, 12.8, pardon me. So this side here is going to be 12.8. This is the long side, 12.8. When you use the Pythagorean theorem, you should get the same answer as 12.8. So this long side here, this side here is 12.8 centimeter. We're going to proceed now to find BD, and as you can see, BD is over here on this side. We don't have an option. We don't have a choice but to use a ratio. All right, so once again here, uh, this is the angle. So this is the opposite side, and this is the hypotenuse, and this is the adjacent. We are looking for BD, which is the opposite, and we have been provided with the adjacent, which is 13.7. So this again is going to be tangent ratio. So tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So the tan, I believe the angle that we're actually working with here is 23. 
and the opposite side is in fact BD and the adjacent side here is 13.7 so there's tan 23 here Zero point four two four, and that's equal to BD divided by thirteen point seven. The unknown variable is at the bottom, so we cross multiply here. Zero point four two four, zero point four two four, multiplied by thirteen point seven, five point eight one. So BD is equal to 5.81 and that is going to be the length of BD so come over here 5.81 so this side here is 5.81 right here 5.81 so if you subtract that short side here from this complete long side here you'll find that 12.8 take away 5.81 5.81 here. So that's 12.8 minus 5.81. We get 6.99. And that's going to be rounded off would be about 7. So the length of this side here, DC, would have been 7 centimeter rounded off approximately. All right, so that brings us to the end of another very interesting tutorial video that highlighted some application questions when it comes to the ratio. I hope that this tutorial was able to help you in some way, shape or form, it gives you some clarity on concepts that were explained involving the ratio. Hopefully you guys can take a look at this and you guys can practice, take some questions of similar nature and experiment with using the ratio. All right, we're going to be taking a break from the trigonometrical applications for now. And we're going to be diving into the next tutorial that will be coming up will be tutorial related to coordinate geometry. So we're going to be taking a look at gradient equation of a line, midpoint and length of a line and that kind of stuff. So I'm going to give you a break from the trig. And as soon as we have, as soon as you guys let me know in the comment section, how much the tutorial has helped you then i can move on to looking at some cosine and sine rule and stuff like that all right so do take care until next time i'll see you in another tutorial this is your math instructor akin and find all information to get in contact with me in the description box below take care and thank you for watching